A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Wednesday, February 23. Barbadians and their Caribbean counterparts will pay a fixed rate for roaming as they use their cell phones while traveling across the region. Flo and Digicel are yet to announce the new rates, but at today's official signing of the Declaration of St. George's towards the reduction of intra-Caricom roaming rates in Grenada, Prime Minister Mia Motley welcomed the move, but made clear the ultimate goal is the elimination of roaming charges. As we want to allow for competition on rates and services to the benefit of the wide variety of users of voice and data services. So we're not prescribing one way in which costs will fall and be capped. Today, we sign a commitment that you, our people, will see new roaming trip packages for citizens of our Caribbean countries over the coming days and coming weeks. We want our citizens to feel it where it matters, in their pockets. We will closely monitor adherence to the commitments made today and follow through. We encourage consumer groups to do so as well. And we are, of course, prepared to take whatever action necessary to ensure that from today, our citizens can enjoy broader services and lower more predictable and capped costs as we move towards that coveted single space and, indeed, my great dream, the elimination of roaming charges for our citizens in the Caribbean community. Under the deal, the parties have agreed on an implementation time frame between the second and third quarter of this year to make the new rates a reality. Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, who has responsibility for telecommunications within CARICOM, said the agreement signals the beginning of new opportunities for the region, even as he too stressed the elimination of roaming charges. Oh, our eyes are set firmly on the ultimate goal, which is to achieve total elimination of roaming charges through the entire CARICOM family. This declaration essentially means that our citizens will have options to use their mobile phones as they move freely within the single space at reduced cost. Our citizens will be able to travel without the fear of incurring the normal exorbitant charges for voice and data usage as they conduct business and keep in touch with loved ones and their businesses. We firmly believe, therefore, that this critical reduction in roaming charges will help drive digital commerce, regional integration, and economic development and will have an even greater impact when total elimin elimination is achieved. Vice President for the South Caribbean at Cable and Wireless Communications, Curlier Prescott, signaled his company's support for the arrangement and pledged that the new single rate will be revealed soon. We at Cable and Wireless are therefore pleased to share that we have taken this first transformation step, transformational step to provide our valued CARICOM customers with significantly reduced roaming packages across the region, which deliver simple, consistent, and transparent rates, an overall reduction in customers' charges, and will eliminate the shock of receiving exorbitant bills. We will start to promote these in our markets in the coming weeks and months. Meanwhile, Digicel's Director of Government Affairs, Chiron Mulvey, says his company also expects to have its roaming rates in place within a month. He described the signing of the agreement as a very significant event for the Caribbean. And today represents a significant initial milestone again on the roadway towards achieving a single ICT Caribbean space that is so vitally important, not just for the social uh, aspects of the economy and peoples of the Caribbean, but for their economic development as well. I'd like to think it's a new dawn for us in terms of cooperation, in terms of working together to agree, achieve greater uh, understandings between us. In other news this Wednesday, a team from the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, is due to visit Barbados in April to conduct an on-site inspection to review government's efforts aimed at being removed from the watchdog's grid list. 
Word of this from Senior Government Minister Carrie Simmons, who is also the Minister of Business Development. Speaking on the Appropriations Bill 2022 in Parliament today, Simmons made clear that Barbados has fulfilled all its requirements and he's anxiously awaiting the overdue inspection, which was delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I have indicated to the Director of International Business and he has in turn directed the, to the attention of the OECD Barbados' um, desire to dispense with this matter as quickly as possible. And quite frankly, sir, our unhappiness that we are dealing in a virtual world and in a virtual space um, very often, but we still have to treat to a question of physical presence for an inspection which, if it does not take place, has serious consequences for the um, reputation of this country. And it cannot and will not be that Barbados's reputation is, is, is tarnished as a result of inspectors not being able to come here because that is no fault of ours. The reputational hit, however, will be ours. And that is a very candid conversation we've had to have with that level of authority. Plans to introduce vending zones across the country are still on track. Minister Simmons also gave an update on the proposal intended to provide new opportunities for vendors. And uh, the cabinet paper has now been prepared, which will take to cabinet a set of recommendations for a number of sites where we will now be getting cabinets or seeking to get cabinets blessing formal imprimatur for us to be able to uh, create vending zones along that, that corridor of the country. Um, that would be a first stop. A second stop then would be for us to um, have the identified places within the communities of Barbados recommended not only by MPs but also um, coming out of some of the suggestions that ha would have been made to us when we had our public consultation in the closing stages of the, the, um, the, the vending bills um, being uh, assessed. In today's COVID-19 update, there were 238 new cases today, 110 males and 128 females recorded on Tuesday from the 1,181 tests carried out by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The number of people in isolation facilities, 97, and 2,601 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine, and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, effective April 1, Jamaica is set to hike its national minimum wage from $7,000 to $9,000 for a 40-hour work week. More on this report from Television Jamaica. The National Minimum Wage Advisory Commission submitted its report as far back as 2020 following consultations with stakeholders. But the Labour Minister, Carl Samuda, says at that time the pandemic was raging and the people were losing jobs. So with the country now on the path to economic recovery, Mr. Samuda says the government is now in a position to grant an increase in the minimum wage. Come April 1, the national minimum wage will move from $7,000 to $9,000 per 40-hour work week, a 28.5% increase. The minimum wage for industrial security guards will increase from $9,700 to $10,500 per 40-hour work week. There will also be an increase in the allowances payable to industrial security guards. Firearm premium allowance will be increased from $48 to $51.95 $51 per hour. The dog handler's premium allowance will be increased from $33 to 
to $35.72 per hour. Life insurance coverage with double indemnity protection and dismemberment coverage will also increase from $2.75 million to $2.976 million. It's been roughly a year since the National Minimum Wage Advisory Commission recommended the increase and since then, there have been renewed concerns about inflation. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin said point-to-point -point inflation was 9.7% for the 12 months up to January this year. The Labour Minister says in the face of rising prices, the government has other support mechanisms for the most vulnerable. On the international front, there is growing unease in the regions in eastern Ukraine, recognized by Russia as independent. We get the details from Al Jazeera Television. Uncertainty is hanging over Advivka, one of the frontline towns in eastern Ukraine. When we met Chaplain Olena three weeks ago, she brushed away the prospect of war. Now she's worried and feels uncomfortable being on the streets. Some of her neighbors openly hostile to her. They think Ukraine is guilty party when it comes to the shelling. They don't believe Russia could act like this. My life is at risk. In this kind of society, anything can happen, especially now. Less than a kilometer away, at the front line, soldiers are on alert. Recently, the shelling has intensified evidence still fresh of the latest rocket attack. The front line here hasn't moved ever since the Minsk agreement was signed with neither sides making territorial gains or losses. But now the recognition by Russia of the two self-proclaimed republics of Donetsk and Lugansk puts into question where the new lines are going to be drawn. The agreement set a 420 kilometers demarcation line giving the Russian-backed separatists only a third of what they see as their historical land. Now, with official support from Moscow, they could try again to expand their control. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.